Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm very excited because I just got these Junkerd boots in. Let's open them up, let's talk about them. So these are my new Junkerd boots in green shell cordovan from the Ricado tannery. This is gonna be my first shell from Ricado. I've seen many boot makers running Ricado shell before. By my knowledge, it's a little easier to get your hands on than the Horween stuff or than compared to the Shinky stuff. I ordered these back in May. These were $545. What a steal. I can't believe it. They let me design the whole thing myself. So this is the SC2089. I assume that stands for Shell Cordovan. 2089 is the item number. Uh, size 42, which is my true to size. I'm a size 9 Brennick. So the leather is... Ricardo Shell Cordovan Green. It's fully lined with lamb skin. The toe box lining has a structured toe. Hardware and eyelets are brass. It's got two extra speed hooks on top. The last is the SC last. The construction method is Norwegian hand welted chain stitched. The welt type is storm welted 360 degrees. The midsole is two layers of leather. Outsole is a plain leather sole. Edge trim is natural brown. So I ordered these on May 14th. They said it would take about three and a half months. It's the beginning of October, so not too bad. They didn't overshoot it by too much. That's one thing that I found with Indonesian makers, Chinese makers. They're super backed up. They're super overwhelmed with orders, particularly from the US. And uh, when they give you a quote, always give them wiggle room. Always expect another 30 to 40% wait time. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Just like we deal with issues here in the supply chain, they're dealing with those same issues over there, probably maybe even a little bit worse. And so for that reason, just being patient with them is the best way to be, especially when you're waiting on something as special as this. So this is green shell cordovan. This is not something I've ever even seen in real life. My first time seeing it is my very own pair of boots. That in and of itself is very special. So the reason I got these was because I have this other pair here. You might remember these from several months ago. These are my Junkerd service boots in Navy Shell Cordovan. This is actually a Shinky Shell. So the, the difference between Ricardo and Shinky Shell are, I don't know, I can't honestly tell. <laughs> they, they feel identical, they look identical, aside from the color difference. The Ricardo feels just as smooth. Yeah, there's literally, there's literally no difference. The shine is identical. I can't tell a difference for the life of me. Uh, I assume the difference will become obvious as they age, though I don't know, because again, I feel like these are pretty much the same leather. Now, if you heard my ranting recently about Alden and their rare shell, I've talked about this ad nauseum. You could wait on Alden rare shell lists for months upon months and or for years upon years and never even get an offer. You know, it's really ridiculous the way that they sort of have that market cornered and they're very strict about who they let in and they, they also have other terms like, oh, you can't sell these online, oh, you gotta, you know, you can't skip a run, things like that. It's, it's just kind of nuts. And uh, while I respect Alden for their ability to stay in business and their ability to retain such loyal customers and their ability to, to retain the brick and mortar shops. For guys like me, it's, it's just not something that I've made my way into. So for that reason, I'm finding that my best option is to go the MTO route through Indonesian brands, through Chinese brands. And they're using the same materials. They're just doing it overseas. And for honestly, a way, way better price. 545 for this rare shell, are you kidding me? If I were to get these from Alden, they'd be about $900. If I were to get something like this from Viberg, it'd be more like $1,500. Just depends on the maker, but I will tell you that I plan on doing the bourbon next. I'm just so overwhelmed by the quality and the fit and the construction. These Yunkards are really made to exacting measurements, to exacting standards. In fact, the differences between these two boots, I mean, they're handmade, so I notice a few, like on the back heel stays, like they're they're not completely the same, but you know, we're working with different cuts of leather and everything. The stitching, especially, yeah, when you compare the pinking on the cap toe here, the, the stitching, the placement of the panels and everything, it's so exact from boot to boot. They're really doing a phenomenal job. 
over there. So I went over the specs a little bit, but yeah. Part of the thing that I really just strikes me about this is I basically made this boot the same as the Navy boot. So I basically said the same way this Navy boot came is the same way I want the green boot. <laughs> the only difference is gonna be this leather sole. I wanted the leather sole because I'm just a sucker for leather soles. I think they lend themselves to a much dressier look. These Navy shell cordovans have the uh, Dr. Sole Super Grip black. The heel stack on the Navy is also a little higher. It's raised by maybe one layer of leather as compared to the green, which is gonna sit just a little bit lower. But yeah, as you can see, they both have the chain stitch Norwegian welt with the storm welt. Yeah, it looks like the toes are a little different. It looks like on the navy ones, it looks like the toes are structured, whereas it looks like on the green ones, they're unstructured, but maybe that's just an optical illusion. I've been a sucker for green boots. I'm a big fan of green. My mom's favorite color is green. Mom, if you're watching, I, I hope you're proud of me with all these green boots I have. <laughs> What's really cool about this sole is it's bottomed with a leather heel, five nails there, and then a rubber half heel here. You can see the shank protruding from underneath here. You could probably see it, this little, this little bulge here. And it's stamped with Yunkard Company Handcrafted Shoes, established 2010. I am super impressed by this brand. What they're able to do, when you go into their website, they give you the option. You can pick from Horween Shell, you can pick Ricardo Shell, you can pick you know, chamois, chrome excel, they're using all the same materials and they're doing it at just a fraction of the price. If you can stand to wait, I would say they are a solid option. Not to mention, I've found that I'm just a big fan of their lasts. I've been wearing the Color 8 chrome excel Yunkards that I have the past couple months. The fit, when you go, you know, for me going true to size, I'm a size nine Brannock, size 42. It's such a good fit. Like my buddy Take says, how's the hand, hand shape? It's like a good firm handshake, I would say. It's not loose, it's definitely not tight. It's just perfect right where it needs to be. At first, I was a little bit you know, hesitant to jump on the Yunkards. Their boots look almost too perfect, almost plasticky in appearance, but that's not a reflection of cheapness, that's a reflection of how exacting they are at, at their factory. <laughs> they really do such a good job. A little bit about their company. So they say, we know that everything's imperfect, but here at Yunkard, we always pursue our best. So every shoe that we build are perfect in its own way, even if it's made by hand. We want to create something eternal that can serve your feet as long as possible. Here are the processes on every shoe and boot we make. It all starts with clicking. We select the best part of the leather for the upper. The clicking process is, pr is pretty tricky because a sharp eyed man is required to determine which part that has tight creasing that meets our standard and which parts that have unacceptable defects. They draw the pattern and cut them by hand. They then assemble the upper, stitch every stitch using their own sewing machine and their most experienced workmen. We build them so that we can forecast the shoe before the next exciting part, the lasting. Lasting takes the longest time span in the process to make the upper shape perfectly with the shoe last. We don't take any shortcuts for this because if it fails, so does the end product. We also can't forget to mention the lasting process is also done by hand. We choose the upper, the last, we pull the upper, nail it down. We do it all over again for your shoes precisely. Patience and awareness is the key to making something remarkable. Next, we guarantee you this, hand welted. We stitch the welt into the upper one by one. This will give us certainty that it has a sufficiently strong stitching that will grip the upper firmly. Attach them to the midsole and to the outsole once again, all by hand, and we do a final check. If it passes, then we finish package and yours are ready to be shipped. With the process above, our wise price is also to give our workers decent wages, brand, scalability, research and development, etc. Our price would sit right in the place between local and international. We won't drain your wallet for sure. We also give you our best possible material for the price. As stated above, we want to create something that will serve your feet for a very long time, and this holy purpose, we can't give you shit. <laughs> and for what? <laughs> we can't guarantee you that we make perfect shoes or boots. We guarantee you that every product meets our standards of satisfaction and makes the best hand welted shoes and boots possible. A few things about that. They say they don't make perfect boots, but I actually have to disagree. These things are perfect. I can't find a flaw 
you know, aside from the obvious, like, you know, I can tell they're cutting the leather by hand along the edges, some of the unfinished edges, you'll just see little bits of leather fiber protruding, but that's with literally everything made of leather. And so that's not a ding. The stitching is just so exact. Not that I care that much, but like the workmanship and the finishing is so opulent. I can't find a flaw. Oh, they really sell themselves short in the description by saying we don't make perfect shoes because yes, they do. Now the, now, the one thing that I will say is like the tongues on these boots, the tongues match the uppers, but the tongues are not shell cordovan. And that's okay. I wouldn't expect the, the tongue to be shell cordovan. Not every company does that. It's not necessary, I don't think. Not to mention shell tongues are pretty stiff. And so this is probably a locally sourced Indonesian leather, but it does match the upper very closely in both cases. And uh, especially this, this blue tongue, it's got a nice rubbery feel to it. It's a good hand feel that it has. It's a well, very well nourished leather and I really like it. And so I'll talk about the MTO process a little bit. It's super easy, you have a ton of options. First you, you choose the style, and you've got just dozens of styles. So for mine I chose the SC2089, they also have the SC2020, SC2078, they have Chelsea, they have Split Toe, they have Derby Cap Toes, the Gallant, the Triumph, the Valor, the Vestito, they have so many models. Then you choose your size, and then for the leathers, you've got probably five dozen options. You've got Badalassi Carlo in tobacco, Cochinella, Cognac. You've got Horween Chrome Excels, Horween Java Wax Flesh, Horween Shell in black, Aramagnac, Color 8, Intense Blue, Green, Natural Glaze, Natural Unglaze, Bourbon. They've got their own pull ups, which I assume are Indonesian leathers. They've got rough outs black rough out, tan, green rough out, dark brown, and then they also have a, a whole slew of uh, ricotto shell. Black, blue, cognac, dark burgundy, dark brown, green, natural glaze, natural unglaze, whiskey, they've got veg tan, they've got so many things. You choose structured toe, unstructured. Uh, you choose your eyelets. You choose the lining, whether you want it unlined or with lambskin. You can choose antique brass, gunmetal eyelets, speed hooks, three speed hooks, two speed hooks. You choose the last. These are on the SC last. Choose the welt. You can do storm welt, 270 degree, 360 degree storm welt, flat welt, or you can just do double row construction. You can choose one or two layers for the midsole. You can choose your outsoles. Ton of options there. Edge trim, you choose whether you want it black, dark brown, medium brown, or natural brown. You could also include your foot measurements. Thankfully, I knew my size already, so I didn't have to go through that process. That process honestly freaks me out every time I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just so happy to have two Grail pair of shell boots here. Shinky blue shell cordovan. These are like my sapphires, my precious sapphires, and obviously, this green ricotto shell are like my emeralds. And uh, so now all I need is rubies and garnets. Yes, <laughs> Gar garnets is a good, garnet would be a good one. So anyways, I still haven't worn either of these. I don't know how soon I'm gonna get to wearing these. I'm, I kind of kick myself, I kind of debate like, you know, with these really special ones, I kind of like to just let them sit in the box for a while and just marinate on them sometimes for up to a year. I've done that before with some boots. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. I have so many other boots to, to wear and break in and just these are so fine and pristine. I just don't know if I wanna really start breaking them in yet. You know, So I'll probably let them sit for a while, but time will tell. Anyways, please leave me your thoughts in the comments below. What do you guys think about this green shell? Like I said, bourbon's coming up next. Please make sure to leave a like in the video if you liked the content. Anyways, stay tuned. I've got a lot more boot videos coming up. In the meantime, if you'd like, you can check out my website, dalesleatherworks.com. I sell cuffs, I sell kilties, I sell veg tan leather insoles, and I also do custom bags. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see y'all in the next video.